All right, welcome to lecture number six. What's this in the background? Listen. Sound ominous? Well, this is a well-known, iconic song, background, soundtrack from the famous movie Jaws from the 1970s, which had several remakes. Actually, relatively recently, there was a remake. But you see, this soundtrack, that became known because if you've ever seen the movie Jaws, the original, you will know that that music played whenever somebody in the film was in the water and about to get attacked by the shark. If you join me on slide number two, you will see we're going to start today's lecture talking about the causes of phobias. And one of the most often referred to causes because the research supports it. Remember, we talk in this class about what the empirical data supports. A large body of research supports the idea that many phobias are caused by behavioral types of experiences. Now, you may remember from intro psych, behaviorist perspectives focus primarily on learning, whether that means through classical conditioning, operant conditioning, or vicarious conditioning, otherwise known as modeling others. Right? So please join me on slide number three for a moment because we're going to come back to why this musical theme is so important. Well, remember from intro psych, you learned classical conditioning. And if you've ever taken a behavioral analysis course like learning and behavioral modification in our department or a behavioral analysis course in the ABA department, applied behavioral analysis, I'm sure you learned about classical conditioning in a variety of ways. Remember, classical conditioning is a form of associationistic learning or associative learning, where a stimulus that starts out neutral, meaning in and of itself, it does not cause a specific reaction in an animal or a person, becomes associated with something that already does cause a specific reaction. And through repeat associations, that one's neutral stimulus comes to elicit a reliable response known as a conditioned response. This can explain not all, but many phobias that people develop. So join me on slide number three for a moment. Let's review how classical conditioning works. This should be review because in intro, I'm sure you learned about classical conditioning. Let's take something as simple as fear of dogs, which is a common phobia. You start out with an unconditioned stimulus and an unconditioned response. So unconditioned stimulus means a stimulus for which learning need not take place in order to reliably cause a particular response. So let's say getting attacked or bitten by a dog is our unconditioned stimulus. The unconditioned response that is caused by that or triggered by that unconditioned stimulus is pain injury, terror, right, if you're being attacked, you don't need to learn that. Generally speaking, being attacked by something is going to cause particular reactions in you. But now let's talk about how the fear of dogs starts. Well, the dog itself was a neutral stimulus before you were attacked or bitten. However, because you were attacked and bitten, the sight of a dog, the sound of a dog, like mine right behind me. Is this guy awesome? Right on cue, he shows up when I'm talking about dogs. <laughs> He's a smarty. The sight of a dog, the sound of a dog, panting, dog barking, anything. Well, that has been associated with being attacked or bitten by a dog. So that once neutral stimulus, the sight or sound of a dog, is now associated with getting attacked and bitten. And as a result, the once neutral stimulus, the dog, the sight of the dog, the sound of the dog, becomes a conditioned stimulus. And in the language of classical conditioning, a conditioned stimulus is a once neutral stimulus that becomes a stimulus that you've learned to react to in a particular way. 
So now I gave you a link here on slide number three. If you were to click on this link, right? And it'll take you to a dog and you hear this dog barking and growling. Well now that sound elicits in you fear because you've come to associate the sight of a dog, the sound of a dog with getting attacked, getting bitten, getting hurt. And that is a very simplistic way that many phobias actually develop through basic associative classical conditioning. Okay, so let's go back to slide number two. What about modeling? What about vicarious conditioning? What about classical conditioning that I just taught you when it comes to something like the 1970s classic movie, Jaws? Well, remember that sound. Let me play it for you again. Here we go. That. Well, you see, if you watch the film, you learn early on that that sound precedes somebody getting attacked by the shark. So eventually in the film, when people hear that sound, dun, 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 their heart starts to race. They start to get edgy because they're expecting the attack on somebody in the film. That's associationistic learning. You've learned the sound that was neutral before you watched the film is followed by somebody getting attacked so that when you hear that your heart starts to race and you start to get edgy because you've learned that that sound is a signal of somebody getting hurt now vicarious conditioning modeling is a type of learning wherein we witness something aversive happening to somebody else and because we identify with that person we see ourselves as similar to that person. We learn the consequences of what that person experienced, even though it didn't happen to us directly. This explains why a lot of people developed fears after watching particular films or documentaries. Jaws is a really important one. There were studies done after Jaws was big in the, in the movie theaters back in the 70s, early 80s, showing that the percentage of people in the general public who reported fear of sharks, even though they'd never been around a shark, had increased substantially as a result of the film. Because watching people in the film getting attacked by sharks, they learned vicariously to fear sharks, that, hey, this could happen to me too. The same with the film The Birds, a famous film by Alfred Hitchcock, who is now no longer with us, but in the film, The Birds, you have people, now this is an old film, so it's funny, when you watch it in terms of the kind of graphics and technology we have today, you think, this is, how could people be afraid of this? But you have to remember at that time, these graphics were top of the line for what people experienced. So this film is relatively old. It's from the 19, or I think early 1960s. And in this film, um, we have somebody who gets attacked by flocks of birds that just start to appear out of nowhere. And you see in the film, this woman getting attacked and other people getting attacked by flocks of birds. Well, when this film came out, there were studies that were done afterwards, after he'd been out in the theaters for quite a long time, showing that people had reported the general public reported an increased fear of birds relative to what the average fear of bird was before the film came out. Again, vicarious conditioning. People are watching individuals in the film getting attacked by flocks of birds appearing out of nowhere in the sky, and they start to think, well, even though I've never been attacked by a bird, hey, that could happen. Look, it happened to those people. I could be walking around, and out of nowhere, flocks of birds are going to attack my head. Think about some of the more recent documentaries that exist in our time today. Things like Shark Week, things like The Deadliest Catch. These are real people showing real examples of things, not fictional accounts, not films, but sensationalized versions of actual events to make for good TV, right? So sensationalized means it's exaggerated for emotional reaction. It's exaggerated beyond the actual event to evoke strong interest and emotion and reactions in people. 
So you watch these things like Shark Week or you watch The Deadliest Catch or documentaries like that based on real people and real events. And you think, well, if it happened to them, it happened to me. And then people start to acquire fears of the insects or animals or reptiles or whatever is featured in these documentaries through modeling or vicarious conditioning. This can also happen with things like other fears, fear of dogs, fear of cats, fear of flying, whatever, because kids as children will often watch parents or siblings or someone close to them showing a very strong fear reaction to a particular animal or insect. And even though the child, him or herself, has never had a bad experience with that insect or animal, they learn vicariously to fear those animals or insects because they've watched a parent or a sibling, etc., show a strong fear reaction. We also see vicarious modeling and the development of phobias with regard to hearing about things that have happened to other people. So you don't even have to see it. You can hear about it. And the more detail and the more graphic detail, the more people are likely to fear it, vicary it because of vicarious conditioning. Like you hear about car accidents, horrific car accidents that are described in detail on the news or plane crashes. And people can come to develop fears of those things, fear of driving, fear of flying, because they hear about in graphic detail what happened to someone else. And they think, well, that could have been me, that could happen to me. So they vicariously come to fear those things as well and develop a phobia. Okay, so I'm gonna end this video here. You're gonna meet me in the next video on slide number four where we talk about cognitive causes of phobias. See you soon.